Okay, so 48 volt system. Gonna check the water in a couple months. This is a golf cart, right? Golf cart battery system. Yeah, 8 volt. 8 volt golf cart batteries for a cabin. Series of six batteries per. Yeah, so we'll show that. So there's six, six batteries in each string. And then um, four strings of six. And you're supposed to check it monthly, but in reality, it's every two to three months it needs it. But what we'll do is we'll start popping all the popping all the caps, and uh, we'll use to mineralize water, or basically you bottle water that's doesn't have minerals. I like to do like three at a time, and then put the caps on so I don't lose track. So you got the water? Yeah. That's okay. right. I'm glad to take a closer if you want. So we're using Gold Peak Tea this time. So let me show what what the water level is. So you can see the top of the um, battery cells inside. You don't ever want that to get low enough where those are exposed. And you don't want to overfill it, obviously. I usually fill it up probably a little higher than I'm supposed to because we're not checking it constantly. So these aren't that low. you'll notice is when it's been a couple months and the water's starting to get a little low, the performance of the batteries will go down. It will uh, not hold the charge as well. <coughs> Once we top them off, they tend to last all night long without having a fire the generator. You might mention that the room is kind of an ambient temperature all the time. Yeah, so what he's saying is, so we're in Colorado at just under 8,000 foot. In the winter outside, I mean, we get 5 degree mornings all the time. And highs sometimes of 20. These used to be located in an outbuilding and insulated. But now they're in the garage and it never gets below freezing in here. We have a cistern in here for the house water and it has never froze. So, you don't want your batteries to freeze. And this is obviously not tea. These bottles just recycle more. Yeah, feed them water. You need paper towels? Uh, not yet. We'll do that when we get the caps on. Okay. So, let's go a little tiny bit of water here and there, right? So. All these batteries are in tubs, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, don't throw too much of it. Now this is 48 volt system, so you you can see voltages of up to 57 volts. So it's not a real electrocution hazard, but you don't want to touch it unnecessarily. You don't want anything metallic that could land in here because that would be a big problem. Like mentioned, uh, our ventilation system pulling air from one end to the other. Yeah, the battery box is insulated, so there's a fan that runs during the daytime and it pulls the hydrogen out to the outside. Otherwise, you'll get build up, and what will happen is it will uh, corrode the terminals, and then obviously there's always the potential for an explosion if you pull up enough hydrogen. This system, the batteries are bigger than the solar system can't really put power in so fast that it boils and makes a lot of hydrogen. Then another water bottle. Ready?
distilled water, and we just fill these bottles up, make it easier. So hold that on and go. One more. These batteries, they typically last about six years. And then when we bought these about two years ago, lithium prices were still kind of high for lithium batteries. Bang for the buck. These lead acid batteries have worked well. This is our third set. I think they were about $110 a piece. Yeah, about $110 a piece. We started buying them initially, they were like $80 a piece. summertime it never gets that hot in here it's always nice and cool in here so it's actually a perfect environment for the batteries another water bottle I'm at So I don't think I need to film filling all of them with water. That's pretty much the process doing maintenance on lead acid battery. You do want to make sure it's ventilated. So there's a ventilation system right there. And down here on this side is where we had it blocked off where air goes in. And then all the wires go through the wood. And then up here, they're all covered in case, because this does get used as a table partially. They're all covered so nothing can short them out. They're all series together. And they go through this penetration and the other room's got the inverters. So for the rest of the system, we just finished the batteries. This is the little outbuilding. It's next to the house. They used to be in, it's just a little shed basically. This generator is just used pretty much to run the well. Um, house has a cistern that runs off the solar system. So you just gotta pump the cistern up once a week or so. This is for the wind generator. Well, this is for the extra solar panels outside this door. This is for the wind generator. It's got a resistor for a break. All right, so I had to tie in because it is a 48-volt system, but um, I have this sampling just one battery. And based on the one battery reading, it turns the brake on if the batteries are getting overcharged. The batteries used to be down here. And that's the two bus bars they would tie into. Now this feeds over from next door. It's a little bit of a mess. It's a, about a 15-year-old system out back. Uh, 3600 watt 48 volt outback that's for the main solar panels a charge controller and then we have the auto former from outback you can run the well on the solar system but it, they better be full batteries with a lot of sun uh, so we normally don't do that we'll go out and look at the panels real quick 
So these are three we just added, I don't know, less than a year ago. I believe they're 230 watt sharp panels. There's the wind generator. It's a 2KW, but that's like 2KW in a hurricane force winds. Normally probably a couple hundred watts. And then the main system just sits over here. I've been using this for about almost 15 years now. I used to have 120 watt Kia Sera panels. Then the wind got them because we didn't have them tied down. And then uh, we went to 230 watt sharp panels about eight years ago, I believe. And that's the system right there. And it runs this cabin, no problem. Two refrigerators, two large screen TVs, furnace. Um, all the lights that you normally have in a house and all these panels tie together in this combiner box and you know lead acid still works I mean eventually we'll upgrade the lithium but for the money back in the day when we started this lead acid lithium was just coming out super expensive there's a mobile system I'm working on right there it's not hooked to the house. That's just runs my RV uh, when it's here. But that system right there is a 48 volt system, lithium, 200 amp hour. It'll probably do the trick.